I'm trying to film while my entire family is home. Oh, you should probably grab a cup of coffee or something because I have a feeling this is gonna be a long one, folks. Hi, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Or mostly just talk about books. Today's video is my March wrap up and in March I read 15 books and uh, I realized something recently and it's that this whole idea of brevity and keeping things brief and you know videos under 20 minutes were, you know, that's just not my spiel so I'm pretty sure this is gonna get lengthy watch this now be like a 10 minute long video but anyway if it gets lengthy this is just who I am I'm trying to like stay true to myself and like not cut out everything that makes me me because I feel that that's gonna be a better video. See, like we're at one minute and a half and I haven't even told you what the first book is. So this is what you're in for. I hope you like it. Now, <laughs> going into the books I read in March, I have a disclaimer to make. The first book I read in March was before, you know, the world went a little cuckoo banana. So please don't come at me. At the time that I read it, everything was kind of normal still. So let's just get into it. I, 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 I the book is upside down. <laughs> I read World War Z by Max Brooks. And I actually gave this book 3.5 stars. If you don't know what this book is about, this book is about a zombie apocalypse. This book tells the story about like what happened in the world, but on a political scale more than on a personal scale. And that's why the book only gets 3.5 stars for me. I was expecting more of a zombie survival book. I don't know why, probably because I don't read synopsis before I go into books, but I loved all of the parts that were more personal, like the first chapter that talks about the doctor that discovered the virus and then the other chapters that talk about like personal stories of survival. Then there were chapters that were all about politics and that's what brought the rating down for me. That's why this only got 3.5 stars, but actually it's a really good book. Just not a book I recommend you read right now. Maybe wait a few months, but yeah, uh, 3.5 stars. It was fine. And up next, I read If We Were Villains by ML Rio and I gave this book 3.5 stars. Oh, this book, I was, I think what brought this book down for me was the expectations I had of it versus like it it was never gonna achieve the expectation that I had of this book because I've heard so many good things about it. But honestly, in my notes when I was like reading the notes that I took about the plot, there were two characters that I was like, oh yeah, those two characters existed. So I think the characters just weren't there for me. The characters I did like, I liked very much. But most of the other characters I was like, oh yeah, you exist. You're, you're here. I forgot you were here. So that's why it only gets 3.5 stars for me. And actually, it was going to get 3 stars, but then the ending happened and that pull, like, pulled it up to a 3.5. And if you don't know by now, this is the story of a group of kids that go to this very prestigious Shakespeare-based academy, university for actors and everyone ha kind of has their like role to play and they always play those roles and then something happens, murder happens, murder happens, that, that's just it. And it's the story of what happened. And it sounds so good and I, I was so, I was actually pretty disappointed in the book and I'm so sorry because I know so many people love this book but I'm just not one of those people. After that, I picked up The Magic Order by Mark Millier and Olivier Coipo. Coipo? Coipo? You figure it out. This is a graphic novel about a family of magicians whose job kind of requires them to keep magic from humans finding out there is magic in the world, if that makes any sense. If you play Vampire the Masquerade, that makes perfect sense. If you don't, then um, maybe you should. But I absolutely loved this graphic novel. I actually gave it a four out of five stars. And the only reason I didn't give it five stars is because I want more. 
<laughs> like honestly i want more i wanted more development more storyline i wanted there to be more tomes of this and as, as far as i know there aren't and uh i want more give me more it's like magical family and oh blood and guts and murder it, it, was this actually written for me maybe just maybe and after the magical order i picked up a reread for me which is among the hidden which is the first book in margaret peterson hadick's the shadow children the, the, the shadow children the shadow children series and i gave this five out of five stars i absolutely love this series this is like a i think early 90s or mid 90s series um it's kind of on the lower side of YA because we follow the main character Luke who's 12 years old and he's a third child in a world where third children are not allowed like the top off the cut off at having children is two and if you have more they actually kill them but yeah this book is this book when I say it's middle grade or like the, the main character is 12 the things that happen in this book are not for 12 year olds like this is an adult book disguised as a little kid's book it's actually really cool it's a bit dystopian it's not a bit it's, it's dystopian but in a good way and i think in a way that hasn't been explored in a long time so if you're looking for a really quick read that is engaging that is fun that is has high stakes then please pick up the Shadow Children the Shadow Children series by Margaret Peterson Hadix. And guess what? Cat is in the litter box because I am filming. Literally been here all day. She hasn't used the litter box, but I I'm filming so she has to. So the next book I read in March is Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sakowski. And I did a whole book talk with spoilers with Elfie from Elfie Reads, which I will link up in the cards and down below. And I gave this book five out of five stars. I loved everything about this book. I love every single female character in this story. And I love Jared, 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 Gerald, Gerald. <laughs> I love Gerald also. I love it and I'm so picking up the next book and I hope the next book doesn't disappoint me because I feel that I've got so used to the whole short story version of the book that I wonder if I'm not gonna like a full-length novel. We'll just have to wait and see for my April wrap-up if I get to it at ever at any point. <laughs> Next up, I picked up another reread and another book I gave five stars to, and that is The Search for Wanla by Tony de Terlizzi. I've been raving about this book all over the place. You must know by now that I adore this book and this entire series, but if you don't know, this is the first book in Tony de Terlizzi's The Search for Wanla series. It's a middle grade series. It's a kind of like an illustrated book that tells a story about a girl called Eva Nine who has been living underground her whole life with a robot named Mother who is taking care of her and it she has to venture out into the world for the first time and she's so excited because she wants to see other human beings she's never been around another human being in her life but when she gets out of her pod she finds that she might not even be on earth at all and maybe she's the only human on this entire planet and it's her adventures and it's the most beautiful whimsical wonderful book that i feel is so under the radar and it please if you pick up any of the books that i'm going to mention in this wrap up please pick up this one i love it so much five out of five stars i already said that i don't care all right and up next i picked up the man in the high castle by philip k dick and I gave this book 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. And it's not because the book is not good. And it's not because the writing is not good. It's because I'm too dumb to understand Philip K. Dick. Like, I understand the words he puts in his paragraphs. I just don't understand how they go together. Have you ever had that feeling? Because this book gave me that feeling. And every single, every single Philip K. Dick book I read gives me this feeling. So this tells the story of an alternate universe where the Axis powers won World War II instead of the Allies and um, it, kind, it follows three different people but two of them I didn't care about. One of them is like, an, uh, like a dealer of 
like American memorabilia and then he gets caught up in a like a rink of deception and I can't even tell you what the second person does I like I think he's a politician see this is the thing Philip K. Dick confuses me and I think it's because the first book I read by him was Ubik and that was just not a good idea but really I've decided to break up with Mr. K. Dick we are never ever getting back together this is this is the last time i tried to read one of his books because they just confuse me and if these kinds of books are your jam i'm so happy for you but this is just not it doesn't bring me joy philip k dick you don't bring me joy so yeah the only storyline i i kind of liked in here was Julia's storyline, the, the third character. She's like this girl that falls for a guy that turns out he's not who he says he was. And there is a book in this book that tells the story of what would have happened if the allies won. And it, uh, I'm just, I was confused. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not smart enough for Philip K. Dix. Go find Spying on Whales. The next book I read, I read on my Kindle as you can see, and it's, I don't know if you can see because of the glare, but it's called Spying on Whales by, by Nick Pineson. And this is actually a non-fiction book that goes into the study of whales and how little we actually know about it. And I gave this book 4.75 out of 5 stars honestly i adored this book i loved this book so much and now i feel like i too am a scientist that has studied whales which n i'm not but you know it made me feel that way and i have all these facts about whales that i just randomly share with people but the reality is what really made me give this book such a high rating is the way it's told it's told like a story and also what i most 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 loved about it was that it brought this idea of being a I mean, i'm sorry if it's not correct to say paleontologist but basically a scientist to be a scientist and to be an artist together to a meeting point where i got it i was like oh this is why you do what you do because to me a scientist don't, like the idea of a scientist seemed very boring because I'm not, I'm 100% I'm like a humanities girl. And then you bring me this book where you show me the passion that goes at my cat. Excuse me, ma'am, are you gonna sit down or not? Where you show me the passion project that it is to study the most gigantic animal on earth. And I was sold. The only like little caveat is that sometimes it does get a little technical with all of like the technicalities and names and and you know things scientific parts that i was not interested in that's why i gave it a little bit of a lower rating but this sent me on a journey of nonfiction books that i am now writing on like this is a train that we're gonna write on and i'm trying to add a lot more nonfiction into my like monthly reading in general I again words fail me but it's a wonderful book I suggest that if you have never read a scientific based nonfiction book you pick this up it will not disappoint and it will make you appreciate whales like another thing I really love about this book it, does, it doesn't it doesn't show judgment on how we have gotten information about whales before, which I thought that was very cool. But anyway, loved it. Loved it so much. I'm so glad I picked this up this month. And next, I picked up the audiobook for Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna Maguire. And I gave it three stars. It was fine. The characters were fine. Everything was fine. I liked the fat representation in the book. I did. But that wasn't enough for me to give it more. I also, I knew I was going to hate the world that they go into because they go into like a sugar world full of neon colors. And and I am I assure you that is not something that like interests me. But I did want to pick it up because I want to continue with the series. So I picked it up. Three stars. It was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just, I think, not the book for me. And I also found that 
uh, the characters felt a little bit flatter for me than they did in the previous book that I liked a bit more. Yeah, it was just a regular three-star book. I wouldn't recommend it per se, but it wasn't horrible either. And next, I picked up my other five-star read. No, I have more, but one of the other five-star reads of the month, and that was The Doll Maker of Krakow by R.M. Romero. And I have a vlog up of the weekend that I read this where I cry a lot. It's amazing, five out of five stars. This book tells the story of a doll maker in the city of Krakow right before World War II begins, and also of a doll who lives in the doll land and she for some reason gets swept up into the human world while in her land there is also a war going on and she thinks the doll maker is the one that can save her world and they work together and they meet the most amazing set of characters and it's heart hitting and it's beautiful and i 100 percent recommend this book even though I don't usually read war books because they destroy me and this book definitely destroyed me. Like it destroyed me so much that I didn't even film my reaction to the end of this book because I was just like sobbing and I thought that that was a little bit too much for YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, definitely five out of five stars. I loved it. Who knows, this video might actually make it under 20 minutes or not. Up next, I read my first classic of the month, and that's... <laughs> just dropped my phone. <laughs> Up next, I read my first classic of the month, and the first book in my book and movie blind date thingamabob I'm doing, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I gave this five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. I loved the character of Jane. But actually, <laughs> the character I love the mo most is Mr. Rochester. I love him. He's like such a weirdo and I love weirdo characters. Um, this tells the story of Jane Eyre and Jane Eyre is a girl who is left orphaned when she's a little girl and she is sent to live with her aunt and uncle and then her uncle dies because Jane Eyre is just like followed by tragedy. And then she basically gets the Cinderella life with her aunt who thinks that she's a wickedly evil child and she gets sent away to this orphanage thing, place, boarding school where she tries, she's, the thing about Jane is that she's like this fiery spicy girl that is always trying to be good. Now I have seen some reviews say that this is a little preachy it's in the 1800s of course this is a little godly preachy but i loved it and it was actually for me <laughs> i love this because for me it was kind of a hilarious read like i was talking to my sister about it she also read it and we were like laughing so much because of all like the ridiculousness that goes on in this book mind you this book is actually kind of tragic but like the whole idea of how people used to treat each other before I mean, it, it was fun. And um, I think Jane is a wonderful heroine and I loved every second of this book. There is a part though that does get a little bit like, uh, okay, that, that, can we like skip to the part that I want? But overall, I loved it. Five out of five stars. And I'm so glad that this was the first classic that I picked up this month and that it was my first Bronte book. I was so scared that I wasn't gonna like it. And on the contrary, I actually loved it. Now, now, I want you all to get ready because then I went classic crazy because lately I've been really enjoying classics. Who knew? Okay, but before we get on that classics train, I actually have one more book outside of this and it is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and I gave this book five out of five stars. I have so many five out of five stars this month, I can't even. This tells the story of a crew on a ship that what they do is punch holes in space and I'm not even gonna try to attempt to explain that but basically this is a story about found family and what I really loved about this story was that the aliens in this story it's the first time that I read about a race of aliens that isn't inherently based off of humans if you know what I mean like the races and the, and the cultures that you read about here 
I, they're completely different from anything that we see because usually when I read books about aliens or anything like that, they're mostly human based and they have a lot of the same customs and things that humans do. A lot of the habits, a lot of the traits that make us human. And in this book, it's like, no, they're completely different. So you get to learn so much about so many different species that don't exist actually. And also about humans themselves and about how these species view us. And oh, it's such, such a good book. And every single character in this book gets their shining moment, gets their moment in the spotlight. And those moments are truly heartwarming, touching. I think this book is more character driven than plot driven because really the plot, I forgot the plot. Like <laughs> there was a point where I was like, well, oh, that's right. They're going to do this and that. Oh yeah, forgot about that. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter because I was so wrapped up in their relationships and the idea of found families. And I love how this book treats the fact that we might one day have to deal with AI and their rights, whether they are considered people or not. So I love it, recommend it, pick it up. It's a little bit on the longer side, but trust me, it goes by super fast because it just draws you in and takes you on a wild space ride. And as I said before, we're now jumping on the classics train and I have Three classics here that I read because after reading A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, I was actually done with my TBR for the month and I felt like I could get through some shorter books. And what I decided to do is to get through a couple of classics that were on the shorter side. So here are the last three books I read in March. The first of the last three classics I read is Dante's Inferno by Dante Argheli. Argheli? No, that's not right. Algeri? Al I can't say that. Alighieri. Alighieri. Dante Algieri? Yeah, that's definitely how you pronounce that name. But basically, look, this is a book where our main character is actually Dante and he wakes up and he is, I believe, like between heaven and hell or something. And his beloved calls upon the poet Virgil to please bring Dante to heaven. But Dante isn't prepared to go to heaven. He has to go first through hell. And let me tell you, hell is one hell of a place. I deserve an award for that one. And honestly, what is this book? This book is Dante like ranting the whole time about everyone he disliked. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That is literally what this book is about. So Virgil basically takes Dante through all like the um, what, circles of hell, which are not actually circles. Well, they are, but one of some of them are bigger than the other. So like it, it's not like a cone, but whatever. They go through the like stages of hell and um, there he meets everyone he hates in real life. I love it because this is just basically Dante's troll book about everyone he hated. This book was great. As you can see, I tabbed it all over the place. The one thing I will say is that sometimes it gets a little confusing. Also, um, Silent Hill has nothing on this book. Uh, some things happen sometimes where it's like, <laughs> uh, Dante. Are you okay, man? It's pretty gruesome. It's pretty graphic. And another thing is that basically Dante fanboys over Virgil the whole time. So <laughs> this is the worst, I think, explanation of Dante's Inferno ever. But yeah, I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars because I was a little bit confused sometimes, but I actually really enjoyed it. And then I got to talk to one of my best friends about it and we had the best time just laughing at Dante and how fun this was because that's the thing. It's actually fun. It's fun and <laughs> After if you're still here after that the next book I picked up is the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde And I absolutely adored this book five out of five stars loved everything about it I started to tab it, but there are pages that have three tabs on them because freaking 
Oscar Wilde is the most beautiful, lyrical, not flowery because he's not a flowery writer, but he has such a way with words that just makes you fall in love. Like, he makes you fall in love with the most detestable man in the world. That's all I'm gonna say about that. In case you're wondering, this book is about <laughs> Dorian Gray and a picture that his artist friend Hollard made of him. Now, Hollard is not only entranced by Dorian's beauty, but also by his inner goodness and innocence because Dorian is actually really young. And then Dorian, by pure coincidence, meets the artist's friend called Lord Henry, who is kind of a not moral, just not the nicest man. And what happens is that Lord Henry tells Dorian that the thing that is good about him is that he is young. And Dorian himself becomes obsessed with this idea that youth and beauty mean goodness. And he makes a wish that he could always be as young as beautiful as the portrait. And as we all know, what happens next is not that the portrait begins to age, which I think that that's kind of what we think happens, but that the portrait starts to show Dorian's true colors. So every time Dorian does something horrible or something mean or something amoral, the portrait gets uglier. It's not that it gets older, it's that it gets uglier. It does also age, but I think that a misconception about the book is that the portrait ages and he doesn't. No, it's more about the morality of the situation. And well, I mean, it's Oscar Wilde's writing. It was beautiful, it was amazing. And if you missed it, this is actually one of the books that I recommend as in my classic like starter pack and how not to summon demons while reading classics for the first time. Because that's totally a thing that happens. No, it doesn't. Oh, jeez. Remember how I said maybe we could keep this under 20 minutes? It's been like half an hour. But we're it. We're, we're there. We're at the last one. Don't worry. And the last book I read in March is this tiny, tiny, tiny Penguin um, Little Black Classics. And this is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And this book was featured in my Five Stars Prediction book tag thing. And I'm here to tell you that I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, but there's a but. I actually gave the story, The Yellow Wallpaper, 5 stars. It's just that there's two more short stories in here, and one of them I gave 3 stars to, and the other one I gave 5 stars to, so that averaged out in the end to 4.5. So, I'm going to tell you just about The Yellow Wallpaper. If you want to read the other short stories, that, that's up to you. But. The Yellow Wallpaper is the story about a woman who is suffering from what we can infer is maybe postpartum depression and her husband takes her to this like village in a, in a, a, very, a very beautiful country house to get her to relax, to just take a load off and get back to herself. And the story is actually about how nobody listens to women when we need something. She constantly is trying to tell her husband what she needs and her husband is like, hee hee, don't worry, I know better than you. Even though maybe she's the one experiencing all of these things, so maybe you should pay attention to her. I found that it's a very feminist view of women. It's a very sad view of how women are treated by doctors even today like i found that the story itself was very like rooted in what still happens today when a woman says that something is wrong and that maybe the treatment that they're giving her is not working or something especially when it comes to our reproductive health i 100 percent recommend this and i mean again if you want to get into a classic and you're scared of maybe something that is 600 pages long and don't want to read maybe crime and punishment because you don't want to be depressed a lot this is good i mean maybe not for the depression part because it's actually kind of sad but i also have to say the writing in this actually reminded me a lot of shirley jackson's writing which is one of my other favorite uh, female modern classic writers. So I, I did this because the whole modern classic versus classic classic, I just call them all classics. So. The next two stories are less engaging or they were to me. The last one, it's even funny, but the first one, The Yellow Wallpaper, definitely five stars. Those were the books that I read in March, but 
I actually forgot to add a book to my February wrap up and I need to add it now because I feel that I want to share this book with the world and that is Jacoby by William Ritter. Now this book is basically Supernatural meets Sherlock Holmes and I gave it 4.5 stars and actually this month I'm reading the sequel because I loved it so much. This book is a it's a, I don't want to say like simple book because it does touch on some like more serious things. But what I found this book to be was very good for my mental health. So it's not as hard hitting as a lot of the other books that I have been reading. And it's funny. It's fun. You want to read it. It's, it's engaging and funny and the characters are so delicious and oh i loved it and actually if you're looking for something to take your mind off of you know the world i 100 percent recommend this book so this book is told from the perspective of a young woman named abigail rook who basically ran away from home because her mother wanted to turn her into a lady of society and her father kind of inspired her to always think outside of the box and to even go to school until it was moment for her to actually do it. And then he said, no, you need to become a lady of society. And that kind of breaks her a little bit because she always like admired her dad and the fact that like he wanted her to be more and then he didn't. But anyway, she decides to take the money that was supposed to be like for her to buy a bunch of dresses or something. And she gets on a boat. She buys a bunch of man clothes. She gets on a boat and she goes to a archeologist expedition that turns out to be total crap. So she, instead of going back home and admitting that she was wrong and that there's no adventure out there for her, she decides to take a boat to America. And the day she gets there she says she has no money she's looking for a job anything she can do and she goes to a bar to eat and there she meets a very strange man who looks at her and asks her if he know if she knows that she has a fairy on her shoulder of course she can't see a fairy on her shoulder but what we find out is that this man is named Jacoby and he is a paranormal detective crime solver what? Need I say more? Also, his best friend is a ghost and there's a duck in here that used to be a human and he decides to stay a duck. <laughs> I mean, this book is so good. Please pick this up if you want just a fun, easy read. There's a romance in here that actually got to me, which is very strange because romances don't usually get to me and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I gave it 4.5 stars. I mean, it's not like it, this book is going to change your life. But it'll entertain you for a while and that's also cool. Oof, we're at the end. We did it. We made it. That is my March wrap up plus a little bit of my February wrap up that I totally forgot. And if you're still here, thank you. Thank you so much for sitting through that. Thank you. Seriously, it means a lot to me. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna start doing half wrap ups depending on how much I read because I think these wrap ups are way too long and yeah, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> But anyway, thank you for coming back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, welcome. And please don't forget to give this little a like and a subscribe and leave me a comment down below. I will warn you though, just like I don't know how to be brief with my camera and you know talking to you guys i also don't know how to be brief in comments so expect paragraphs from me and that's <laughs> just i can't do anything about that i really i've tried I've, I've, I've tried throughout this whole time it just doesn't work but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye guys i have so many out i just kind of want to say boo by the way can we talk about my sweater i mean i know this is not to everyone's taste but I love it and this was my favorite sweater and then it got one hole in it so I decided to just make it like uh, like the stress sweater which by the way I found that they charge a bunch for online so I made Dom's hole for it and now I feel like I should be named something like Kira and I'm like a like a, a space mechanic yeah that's what I feel like I don't know what else to say after that because that tells you where my mind is at. <laughs> I'm a space mechanic. <laughs>